Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I hope you're all wonderfully well and very tickety boo. Um, now, this is a video on our new channel range called Explaining Wine Terminology. So there are key terminologies that you'll hear uh, spoken in the world of wine to do with many different concepts, including things like wine production, labeling, geology, and so on. And we're going to explain them in good detail. Now, this is very useful for those of you studying the WSET courses. As you know, uh, my, my channel is very much geared towards the WSET. So this is very good for those of you studying WSET level four. So this is the diploma, but will be exceptionally useful for those of you studying the level three. Some of the information here for you level three students may be a little above your pay grade, but it is still nonetheless exceptionally useful uh, for your knowledge. Uh, so it's a bit more information than you need, but why not? It will be useful for you. As always, if you do have any comments, questions or those concerns, please pop them in the comments section of the YouTube video, or you can get in touch via social media that you see at the bottom of every slide or direct by the website winewithjimmy.com com. Be great for, to hear from you. So let's look at the world of diurnal range. What does it mean? What are high and low diurnal ranges? How do they impact wine styles and aromas and all of those kind of things? We've got some lovely pictures to back up a lot of all of this information that you will learn. So first of all, a definition of diurnal range. The diurnal range of an area or a region or vineyard site, in fact, you can be quite specific, is the average difference between daytime and nighttime temperatures. OK, so the precise effects of different diurnal ranges are not yet fully understood. Now, I know this often sounds like a little bit of a cop out. You know, the fact that we don't fully understand these concepts, a little bit like how geology can affect wine as well. But of course, we are exploring many of these factors and the information that we have from different schools of thought uh, what I will present in this presentation. But of course, there will be contra contradictory evidence out there as well. So there are some schools of thought that suggest constant temperatures are more favorable for producing higher quality grapes. But there are other schools of thought that believe that significant differences between average daytime and average nighttime temperatures is beneficial. And it depends, of course, on the philosophy of that person, the area, the region, and so on. The effects on the wine will depend on the average day and nighttime temperatures, as well as a number of other factors. Remember, they're not mutually exclusive. There will always be overlap here. So things like the grape variety, things like time in the growing season, so the specific time, and the availability of water. So what are we going to talk about first? High diurnal ranges give you some examples and what really contributes to a high diurnal range area. Here is the DO of the Ribera del Duero, this uh, wonderful region, one of the DOs of Castilla Leon, is found on the Duero River as it runs down into northern Portugal. The river starts its life in the Sistema Reberica and then kind of goes immediately south and then heads west. And the first real important wine region here is the Dio Ribera del Duero at both high altitude and continental, very continental. So it has extremely high continentality because it's landlocked central, central northern Spain. So those two factors are exceptionally important. High altitude, and continentality really increases the diurnal range. And here in the Dio Ribera del Duero, common summer days will be 35 degrees Celsius. And then the nights, of course, can drop well below 10 degrees Celsius. And that big difference is, of course, the big difference of the diurnal range. So that is high diurnal ranges. 
Then we have low diurnal ranges. And these are areas that are close to large bodies of water. The obvious examples here are seas and oceans, uh, massively affected, tempered and moderated by those large bodies of water. But I've given a slightly more niche example here, and that is a lake which is on the Hungarian border of Austria. And this is the Neudsiedler Zee Lake in Austria. You'll see it in the background of that picture. And that can have a moderating effect uh, also on the localized area. But think mainly about, of course, coastal zones that tend to be the most moderated, of course, places like the Loire, places like Bordeaux, etc. OK, they'll have low diurnal ranges. So what about diurnal range in warm to hot climates? So warm to hot climates are areas where the average growing temperatures during the growing season are above 18.5 degrees Celsius. That's for warm and then in excess of 21 degrees Celsius for a hot climate. So these are exceptionally warm places such as Ribera del Duero, but also Mendoza, which is Argentina's wonderful large region uh, that produces a significant amount of their, uh, of their annual production. So in these areas, you'll have um, the large diurnal range, which is thought to be quite beneficial to the overall quality of the wine produced. In these climates, a relatively cool period during the night can slow the respiration of the malic acid. And the malic acid is the secondary acid that we find within grapes, which can provide a real nervy, racy character in a lot of wines. In areas where it's naturally very, very hot, you're going to want to try to protect these acidities as much as possible to provide balance in your final wine, because you're going to have ripeness, you're going to have lots of alcohol and intensity. You need a real good balance of natural acidity within there as well. So they believe, of course, here that um, the cooler nights slows the respiration down of the malic acid. There isn't too much lost through the grapes uh, during those, uh, those cooler nights. Also, uh, it's beneficial for the formation of anthocyanins. Um, the daytime temperatures are often too hot to, um, to, to create good formation of anthocyanins, but the nighttime temperatures aren't. So this is where we're able to get good color pigmentation. And look at the Malbecs of Mendoza and the Uco Valley, which is the part that goes right into the Andes at the highest altitude of Mendoza. Really colorful, inky, purpley wines, which uh, are really wonderfully formed in their anthocyanins due to, partly due to these diurnal temperature swings. Diurnal range in cold or moderate, so this is below 18.5 degrees Celsius for moderate and below 16 and a half for cool climates, such as uh, places like the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, Australia, or the Mosul in Germany, in southwest Germany. Now, a low diurnal range, so therefore a very minimal difference between the daytime and nighttime temperatures are favorable. So the nighttime temperatures will still allow ripening. So longer elongated ripening. And this means that there will be better acid degradation. So that is the reduction of the acids, which may be a little bit too high in these exceptionally cool places. So that allows better continued degradation of the acidity. OK, so that's the cool to moderate climates. Then we have the diurnal range and the effect on aroma compounds. And one of the classics is methoxypyrazine. And methoxypyrazine is often found in many grapes that are underripe and will be more prevalent. And they produce those very herbaceous characters when the wine is fermented. But there are certain grape varieties that have more methoxypyrazines. And this produces characteristics which are like green pepper, asparagus, grass, nettle, 
those kind of things. Now, here we've got on the left hand side, you have got a, 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 a temperature scale, a thermometer, and you've got the arrow going up there, the red arrow. So this is basically explaining that warmer nighttime temperatures, low diurnal ranges, is actually going to be associated with the greater breakdown of methoxypyrazine. So basically better ripening and breaking down those, those methoxypyrazine compounds. So therefore the wine will have less of those overall. And that may be important in cool climates because they may be worried about too many of these compounds. Then we have the aroma compounds which are associated to those colder nights, so in high diurnal areas. And that's really showed you on the left hand side. So you have a big blue arrow there, which is saying that the cooler temperatures. And this basically is something that may be able to re really sort of uh, uh, protect the characteristics like black pepper in certain red wines. Now, black pepper is a characteristic classically of Syrah uh, in moderate climates like the Northern Rhone. And the compound that gives us that black pepper is the one which is called rotundan. And rotundan is, it really gives you that dis distinctive black pepper character. It's actually from a chemical compound called sesquiterpenes. Uh, and Syrah is the varietal that has a high amount of these. Um, Rotundone actually originates from the grape skins. And in fact, it is one of the few aromatic compounds that can be found directly both in the grapes uh, and in the wine. So it's an aroma in the grapes, not a precursor, and then an aroma finally in the wine as well. Uh, so in these cooler places, these are actually retained. Um, and that's something which, of course, the Northern Rhone is, I think, slightly worrying about as climate change comes into play. Places like the Northern Rhone are getting warmer. And the actual retention of this classic varietal character, this rotundan character, which produces black pepper, potentially could start to be diminished in this region. So the varietal character, which everyone knows it for, could be lost. Now, given the number of aroma compounds and precursors in grapes uh, and their interactions, such relationships uh, are, of course, quite complex. So we don't 100% know these, but we've given you some, um, some trains of thought. So exceptions to the rule here. So there are um, some exceptions to the general theories that we've just proposed where you have cold nighttime temperatures um, it, and then cold, generally cold areas. So you have cold temperatures and then cold nighttime, like many parts of the Wachau in Austria on the Danube River. So you'll see cold nighttime temperatures well below 15 degrees Celsius, but generally in quite cold climates as well. Um, so you will not, we're not too sure why this happens, uh, Perhaps it's related to the extension in the growing season that cool nights give, so a longer season. However, there could be other influences, of course, that we are still not 100% sure about. OK, so that really is talking through the diurnal range. I really hope you found this useful. Remember, if you are here for the first time, click the subscribe button. Make sure you do subscribe to get two wonderful updates of wine information and wine knowledge per week. Um, and if you are not already and you are studying your WSET, please make sure that you go and subscribe to my e-learning portal. So this is found at www.winewithjimmy.com. Click on e-learning portal. And if you're studying for your WSET level one, two, three or four, you can subscribe to any of those and you will find exclusive video content, many, many videos which are exceptionally useful. The level three ones, for example, have partial written uh, questions and answers at the end of many of the uh, videos. You will find short written answer questions and answers. You will find multiple choice questions and answers revision sessions, and soon to be things like map functions as well. It's a really useful place uh, for you to um, supplement your learning in class with your WSET. 
Well, thank you so much. I've been Jimmy Smith of The Wine with Jimmy. I um, hope to see you very soon. If you do find yourself in the wonderful city of London, then please make sure you come and see me at one of my wine bars or wine schools. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much. Goodbye.